Hello everyone. So I have been reading about the cult of Keith Raniere, known as Nixum. And uh, for the last past several weeks, I have been reading a book. I'll pull it out here. It's called Don't Call It a Cult. It's a very, very interesting read. It's a, it's a very accessible read. It's not difficult to read through this book. Uh, a lot of authors, when they get into talking about something, they will uh, overcomplicate their language. But this book does not do this. It's uh, very simple to understand. It's very easy for the brain to digest what this author is uh, explaining and detailing. And it is, uh, it's, it's just very educational. It's very informative, and it does its job, which is to tell you about this cult called Nixum. Nixum is spelled as N. X I V M, but the V is a U, so it's Nixum, and uh, it's supposed to be some kind of acronym. I think it stands for the next millennium or something like that. I don't really know, and it's kind of uh, an enigma. Uh, <laughs> but it it goes without saying that this cult, the story of this cult, is very disturbing. Uh, what I find fascinating about the cult of Keith Raniere is that it started really it started out really as a a multi-level marketing scheme. Uh, Keith Raniere started this this business and it was presented as this huge company that offered uh, a, a variety uh, of different services like real estate services and also products such as cosmetics, etc. And so the, the company would, would try to get members. And if you were a member of this company, then you could buy these products or purchase these services, and you would get a discount because you were a member of Keith Raniere's company. It was a pyramid scheme that focused more on membership than selling products. And uh, you know each member would pay, I think, like $200 uh, a year. And so if you had... Uh, tens of thousands of members, you were getting millions of dollars every single year. And the business really, it, was, it really wasn't a, a business. It was a pyramid scheme, and it, but it was presented as a business. It was presented as a company, but it was, um, the way that it functioned, it functioned like a cult. Everybody was dedicated to Keith Raniere. Everybody was obsessed with Keith Raniere. Raniere was was touted as the smartest man in the world. He was an athlete. He was a genius. He had the highest IQ in the world. He got the highest score for the most difficult IQ test uh, in the world. And all of this was BS. Uh, Keith Raniere was uh, somebody who, for some reason, he was a master manipulator. I can't really figure it out. Uh, even the book doesn't really tell you how this guy was able... I mean, it, it tells you what he would tell people, but reading the book, I can't really see how anybody could fall for this guy. And that's the thing about cults that I find so strange and so inexplicable, is that you see these cult leaders, and they look ridiculous, and they act ridiculous, and they talk ridiculously, but people will get on their hands and knees for them, for cult leaders. And I kind of and I, I kind of ha have an idea as to why this happens. And I'm gonna try to explain this in, in this video. Uh, but first I wanna, you know, get more into this cult, get into more details about this cult. So basically uh, various governments in the United States, like the government of, of Arkansas, the government of New York, figured out that this guy was a pyramid schemer and that what he was doing was just um, unethical and it was illegal. So they shut down the, the, the company. The company was shut down. Uh, but Keith Raniere was not going to give up. He was going to continue on what he was already doing. But this time he was going to do his scheme uh, masqueraded as... Uh, a self-help organization or a self-help group, kind of like uh, going to a yoga class or going to some 
uh, guru, going to some spiritual guide, like from, you know, some guy, like you, for example, you have people who come from India and they say they're gurus or they're spiritual masters or guides or whatever. And there's plenty of those, especially online. And people will flock to these, to these so-called masters because they have the answers. And, uh, People are, are searching for consolation. They're searching for comfort. They're searching for some kind of explanation that can satisfy the gaping void in their soul. And you have these people who come along and they give answers that satisfy them. Or they think that it satisfies them. And so Keith Raniere began to, uh, began to get members. He began to talk about trauma and psychology. He also uh, studied hypnotism, and he believed that he could use uh, tactics that were taught by hypnotists on people and that he could really get people to, uh, to follow him. And that's what he did. Most of his members were women, and while he marketed his movement as a sim as simply a self-help group where people could come and purge themselves of their trauma and their psychological issues, the reality was that it was truly, truly just a place for Keith Raniere to get laid, to get laid many, many times. And that's what happened. Most of his members were women. Women, and I'm not saying that men men most definitely follow cult leaders, but women also, many times women will dedicate themselves to cult leaders to the point where they're giving the leader sex uh, without any without any bit of of discretion or or discernment or or, or vigilance. They just give it to him because they think this guy is the boss. This guy is a genius. He's going to give me the answers. He's going to give me the best life because he's going to protect me from trauma and all these things, all these bad things. And women are very attracted to, to power. Women are very much so attracted to power. I don't have to explain this to you. Everybody uh, in the millennial generation who has, uh, you know, every guy who has tried to understand women – has ran into uh, sell not self help uh, uh, pickup artist uh, articles and videos and they all say the same thing. Women are super attracted to power, and this is something that is undeniable. They are. A lot of women will get on their. They will submit to to men, even and no matter how evil these men are, they could be genocidal maniacs, but because they're very powerful, they're very influential. Women will fall for them. Men will dedicate themselves to cult leaders, uh, and and many times men will will violently uh, defend their cult, or at least they will defend it aggressively. Not necessarily violently, but at least they will defend it aggressively. Uh, but you have male extremists who follow the cult leader; they follow the cult, and they will defend the cult to the point of violence. Um, and we've seen this many times. We've seen this in the case of, 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 of David Koresh. We've seen this in the case of, uh, of, um, uh, Joseph Smith, the Mormons, Islam. There are many examples of this. And there are cases of people who are, are very dedicated to, to cults and uh, to a, a very, to a very disturbing level. For example, uh, I read a story uh, not too long ago uh, about a man in Japan who uh, he didn't start a, a a huge cult. He had a very small cult. It consisted of just one member who was his girlfriend, and she was super dedicated to him. And he would preach from Buddhist texts. And uh, this guy was uh, was a thief. He was actually an embezzler, and he would tell women. Uh, that he was going to marry them, and they would believe him, and then he would say, oh, uh, you know, I'm going to marry you, but I need to make sure that we are financially secure. So can you tell your parents to give me 20 million yen, 10 million yen? Oh, yeah, sure, here's the money. And he would rob these women. And uh, 
His girlfriend was was uh, very dedicated to him. She was his partner in crime, and uh, this Japanese guy actually uh, blackmailed the man, and he told uh, he told him, uh, "I know that you've committed some kind of crime, uh, so you better give me your money, or else." And the guy gave him his money, and then uh, this uh, Japanese cult leader actually tortured this man. For, for, I think, several days in his apartment and did some of the most horrific things I've ever read about. Um, had his daughter bite him viciously and told the, daughter, do- told the daughter, bite your own father or else I'm going to electrocute you and torture you. And uh, eventually it, it, they, they, they murdered this man. Uh, blackmail is something that manipulators do, and this is exactly what uh, Keith Raniere did. Keith Raniere's cult uh, controlled people with manipulation, uh, but also with blackmail. And what he would do is he would tell his members, and uh, he he wasn't the only one doing this. He had high-ranking members who did this as well. What this cult would do would what Raniere's cult would do is they would tell uh, uh, people that they wanted to to control, to enslave, really, um, I need to know that you trust me. So this is where the manipulation came in. I need to know that you trust me. So give me something to, to prove that you trust me. Give me something extremely personal in your life or tell me something that you don't want anyone to know about. Tell me about a sin that you've committed that you don't want anyone to know about, a sin that you are very ashamed of. Tell me about something bad that you did in your past or give me a a photograph of you naked. And these women would do this. They would give... Uh, nude photos of themselves to the cult, or they would tell the cult about something very bad that they did in their past that they don't want anyone to know about, that they didn't want anyone to know about. And then the the recruiter, and these recruiters tended to be women, the recruiters would do the same thing. The recruiters would say, oh, I, let me tell you about, about something very bad that I did in my past, or here's a photo of me naked. See, now, now we got each other. See, now we, now, we've, now we both trust each other, right? We've proven that we both trust each other. So now they would start making commands to these people. They would tell the women, give me, give me some photos of yourselves naked. Well, I don't want to do that. Well, if you don't do it, then I'm going to tell everybody about what you did. I'm going to call up your employer and tell your employer about the sin that you did or the very bad thing that you did, or 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 here's another thing. Um, there was one case that I read about in which a woman said, well, I, I haven't really done anything that bad. So I don't know what to, what to give you. And the recruiter, the recruiter was Allison Mack, who was a, a famous actress at the time. She played in Smallville. It was a very famous show back in the day. Allison Mack, who was a recruiter for the cult, she said, well, make up something. Uh, tell me that your father molested you. Well, my father didn't molest me, but, but just, it's a lie, but just say it, right? Just say it. So that way, that way you have confided something in me that you don't want anyone else, that you wouldn't want anyone else to, to, to know. And that way, uh, you show that you trust me. Okay, fine. So she wrote a letter saying I was, I was molested by my, by my, uh, my father. Okay. So they would take the letter and then any time. She told this woman to do something that she didn't want to do. If she objected, Allison Mack would say, well, I have this letter about you saying that you that your dad molested you, so I'm going to give it to the media, or I'm, I'm going to give it to your employer. I'm going to give it to a radio station, something. Okay, I'll do what you want. And it was all control. And so Allison Mack, see, and, and this is probably the most famous person who joined the cult. Allison Mack, famous actress, played in Smallville, big show back in the day, back in the early 2000s. She was very good at getting people to trust her. And if you ever see a video of Allison Mack 
talking, you could see why, right? She's good looking. She's an actress. She was in Smallville. She has this nice smile. She has these glittery, glittery eyes, almost innocent looking, but that's deceptive. And very outgoing, listens to jazz music. Oh, hi, how are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. People fall for that sort of thing. And these women would say, oh, look, Allison Mack. I'm friends with Allison Mack, and she's talking to me, and we're texting each other, and we're friends. And Allison Mack would say, okay, give me, a, give me a nude photo of you. Tell me something embarrassing about your life. Tell me something that you're ashamed of. Okay, 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 okay. And then one day, Allison Mack says, hey, let's go out for a late, you know, let's go for a ladies' night out or something. So the ladies go out, they have dinner, they're having fun, everything's good, even though they've seen probably a million red flags. And Allison Mack comes out and she says, okay, ladies, I'm going to take photographs of your vaginas. What? Yeah, 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 take your pants down. Well, I don't want to do that. Well, if you don't, then, you know, you told me that your dad molested you. Yeah, well, your family's going to know that you told me that. It's going to be embarrassing that you would make that up about your dad. Well, I don't want that to happen. Take your pants down then. And the ladies would comply. It was control through blackmail and manipulation. It was very, very disturbing and sad. And uh, eventually, Allison Mack would tell these women, this circle of women that, that, that she controlled, to be good little slaves. She would literally tell them this. Be, be a good little slave. Tell me that you're my tell me that you're my slave. You are my slave. You are a good slave. And the women were like, wait a second. I'm not a slave. And all these women were white. There were some African American women that were in the cult, but as soon as they were told that you're a slave, they left. Because they said, mm, nope, not doing this again. I ain't nobody's slave. And these women thought, oh, look, I'm with Allison Mack. And then Allison Mack would direct them to Keith Raniere. Why? Because Keith Raniere was trying to have sex with all of them. And Allison Mack would say, Keith Raniere is the smartest man in the world. You have to follow him. And don't forget to send him a text every morning saying, good morning, master. And before you go to sleep, send him another text. Good night, master. And these women would do it, and they all, most of them, felt pretty disgusting about what they were doing. But Allison Mack would be there with her smile. Hi, hi, you're a slave, don't forget that. It was control, control through blackmail. This is one of the illegal things that this cult was doing, that and sex trafficking. But people follow this sort of thing. And I can see, in a way, huh? In a way, I can see why people would listen to a cult leader because they're good at talking. They may have answers that are edifying to some to somebody who's in a difficult state. Um, but at the same time, there comes a point where that you're like, "Wait a second, this is crazy." But why? And this is this is one thing that I'm going to try to explain in this video. Why would people? become so dedicated to a cult. Manipulation is only effective on you if you desire something and the manipulator has what you want or at least gives you the impression that he or she has what you want. There was a show, I forgot what it was, what it was called, but it was a European drama on the on the Borgias, the the Borgias family back in your very powerful family that were very very uh uh, entrenched in the uh, in the Vatican and the Catholic Church, and uh, there's a scene where a girl is talking to some, I think some Borgia cardinal or whatever, and she says, "By knowing their desires, we know their weaknesses." And so, if somebody has something that you want, and you want that something so badly, in a way, you are susceptible to being controlled unless of course you know that they're manipulators and you're not going to fall for it 
So, for example, and there's different things, right? And this is one thing that all cult leaders do. There are different things that people can offer you uh, that you want. Uh, for example, um, a big thing right now is uh, getting rich and, and being tough, right? I mean, this has always been a thing in the male psyche. Uh, and that's why it's so effective because all men want to be successful and they want to be tough. Uh, and so you have a lot of these schemers who come around and they say, well, I, I am super rich. I'm, I'm worth a hundred million dollars and, uh, I'm a genius and I'm brilliant. And if you're not like me, well, then you're worthless to society. And, you know, you should probably kill yourself. And yes, there are people out there like that. Just look up Daniel Pena. His videos are all over Instagram, all over YouTube. I saw him years ago. I didn't think he would ever blow up like this, but he has. He's gone viral. Um, but but Daniel Pena does this sort of thing. Well, I'm worth all this money, and you can be rich like me. But if you're you know if you're not smart like me, then uh, whatever. Or you need me. And I saw a video where some guy was saying. I need help, Daniel. I need help. Uh, uh, if I don't become like you, then I'm just, I, I should just kill myself. And, and Daniel Pena will get a pistol and put it in his mouth and be like, just, just blow your brains out. Just blow your, I mean, it's crazy guys. It is sick. It really is sick. And people will follow men like this because they think that this person has the answers. This guy's going to help me get rich. He's going to help me become tough. I should follow this person. Or the cult leader can say, well, if you follow me, I can give you lots of women. You know, you want three wives, four wives. And that was the case with Joseph Smith. Or if you follow me, I can give you the way to, to salvation. Follow me. Oh, I, I really want salvation. Well, everybody wants salvation, right? At least most people want salvation. We should all be seeking salvation, but... Jesus warned about people who would lead others astray into false paths to salvation. False paths to a false salvation. In, in uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus says, Anyone who says that they have the way is a, is a, is a murderer and a thief. And that's exactly what these cult leaders are. They're they're either murderers or they're thieves or they're both. And sometimes they're both. They're all the above. Jim Jones, uh, Marshall Applewhite, uh, David Koresh, murderers, thieves, or uh, polygamists. Uh, yeah, all of them. So this is the nature of, of cults. And the Nixon cult got so strange got so strange and people were willing people were so dedicated to Keith Raniere because they thought that he had all the answers and and they were so dedicated to him that they would do all sorts of weird things women would just have intercourse with him anytime he demanded um and also uh people would be willing to talk about things that were very very demonic and, and demented. For example, uh, because you had uh, some people from Hollywood that were in uh, Nixon, that were in this cult, uh, all of a sudden Keith Raniere talked about starting an acting class. Well, I want to start a, an acting school. Okay, fine. Let's start an acting school, even though Keith Raniere wasn't an actor, didn't know how to act. But because they were actors in the cult, he thought, oh, okay, we have actors here, so let's start an acting class. And these people would come together in this acting uh, class, and uh, the instructors would say, "Well, if you're going to be an actor, then you need to uh, you need to be able to act out anything, no matter how demented, no matter how disturbing it may be. You have to act it out. So let's uh, let's pretend that we are raping a baby. What? Yes, yes, yes. Let's pretend that we're raping a baby. Well, well, I I don't want to do that." Well, if you don't want to do that, that means that you have issues in your own mind. Maybe you yourself uh, are a pedophile, and that's why you're afraid to to act this out. Uh, because if you if you uh, if you weren't a pedophile, then you would be uh, secure and comfortable in your own skin. And because you're uncomfortable, you know, acting as if you're raping a baby, that means that you probably have some skeletons in your closet. You probably have some. Uh, 
probably some sins in your past that you've committed that you're too ashamed of. So, uh, you know, you must be a pedophile. So people would, people were so afraid of being accused of being a pedophile that they would actually pretend that they were raping a baby. This is the power of, of cults, everybody. It's very powerful. And what makes them powerful is that people desire things and the cults say that they can give that thing to them. I remember years ago, somebody tried to get me into a Christian pyramid scheme. It was not really Christian, but it was it was uh, pr presented as Christian. And uh, the guy, I, I told this guy, and I thought he was just a marketer, right? I didn't understand pyramid schemes in 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 in, 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 in this time. And uh, uh, some a friend of mine said, "Oh, this guy can help you get your message out to churches. He's very well connected to churches." And I thought, "Oh, okay, great." And that time. I thought, well, I have to get to the churches, right? Got to get to the pastors. That's what I got to do. Wrong. My mentality has completely changed, but that's what I thought at that time. And uh, this guy, I told this guy, I want to to be connected to churches. You can help me. And this, so this guy knew, oh, wow, this guy wants something. So I'm going to tell him that I can give it to him. And that's what this guy did. Yeah, I can connect you. Absolutely. I can help you out, blah, blah, blah. Well, after the second... Uh, or after, I think it was after the, uh, yeah, after the second or third telephone meeting, I was like, okay, what are you going to do for me? Right? Like, I, I don't want to sit here and just have these meetings, like talking about marketing. Like I, you, you told me you can connect me. So connect me, here, help me out here. And he started being a manipulator and he said, well, you're asking the wrong questions, Theodore and blah, 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 blah. And I said, okay, I'm done with this crap. And the friend who introduced me to this person, she forwarded me an email by this guy saying that Ted guy, you know, he's just insubordinate he's terrible don't talk to him anymore a cult leader so that's what makes cults so powerful is that they make you think they have a bait in the hook they make you think that they're going to give you what you want in reality they just want to destroy you and take your stuff anyway you guys just heard some theology god bless